Hey there, I'm Tony Dubio, a product solutions architect for Red Hat Ansible focused on network automation. Today we're going to take a look at event-driven Ansible for networks and SolarWinds. SolarWinds is popular to manage network infrastructures and we can learn in this demonstration how event-driven Ansible can work better together with SolarWinds to better protect our mission-critical network infrastructure. Okay, let's have a quick level set on how event-driven Ansible works. It all starts with the source plugins. Source plugins are where we um, listen for events or define where events come in from so that we can consume the events later to pass to our rules engine in our rules book. And a rules book is much like a playbook used um, for EDA. The type of source plugin that we're using for today's demonstration is a webhook from SolarWinds. Second, we define the rules. So the rules is the conditional structure in that rule book that we use to describe um, what actions should occur based off of information matching um, that we receive in the source plugin. So this is where we set our conditionals. Lastly, we have actions um, to act on these rules. So if a condition is matched, then we have several different actions that can occur. As simple as um, running a playbook or in the Ansible Automation Controller, we can trigger a job template, which runs a playbook, or a complete workflow can be triggered, as well as other uh, mechanisms or options such as ad hoc task, um, notifications, or gathering facts for logic to use for subsequent um, playbooks that we could run in, in our workflow. Um, in terms of the use cases, um, primarily the network use cases, a, a large majority of it is around break fix, where we diagnose network failures, and then we can automate the troubleshooting tasks to save time and to be able to you know, determine root cause of the issue much quicker. Um, secondly, we can automate opening and, and closing tickets and updating tickets in our ticketing systems like ServiceNow or Remedy, as an example. And we can actually remediate issues uh, either on demand, fully automated, or through an approval process with proper change management. So before we jump into the demo, let's talk a little about what you're going to see in the demonstration to set the backdrop, if you will. So as far as the EDA components and um, you know other um, entities that'll be a part of this demo, we have a Cisco router with SNMP enabled so that it can um, be pulled by SolarWinds. So SolarWinds will periodically pull the router um, to look for particular information based off of SNMP MIBs. In this demonstration, we will look at the interfaces and we will determine if an interface that is mission critical, if it is accidentally shut down or if there's some other type of failure, then we can react from that um, through SolarWinds detecting it and creating an alert where it can use a webhook and the webhook is the mechanism that ties into the source plugin in the event-driven Ansible um, controller. So that way, if a webhook is received, we have access to that payload. And that payload will include information that was previously or has been collected prior by SolarWinds and now passed to the EDA controller um, to act upon it. So in the actions, what we'll do is we'll trigger a playbook by triggering a job template in the automation controller to no shut the port and also to do some other troubleshooting and triage to ensure that the interface is up and running with line protocol up. And then from that, we will have a complete feedback loop and we will resolve a break fix issue. Okay, so enough of me babbling on about slides. Let's go ahead and talk about solar winds. You can see here that we have a single device configured for solar winds and as we drill into that device we can see that its overall health is pretty good at this point so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stats here and really what we want to do is we want to double click um, into interfaces in this demonstration interface tunnel zero is super important to us because that is where we have our OSPF neighbor peering adjacency so we want to double click into tunnel zero and we want to ensure that that port is protected. That is our mission critical port and we will use EDA to help us recover from any down issues with that particular port. The current state of tunnel zero is active and 100% available. 
In SolarWinds, we've configured an alert that is triggered if interface tunnel zero on router one were to go down, and that would cause a critical alert. Another important configuration here are the conditions. So if the availability were to fall under 100% for more than 10 minutes in one second, because of the polling, then that would send a notification using a webhook. And the webhook is configured through Zapier, which is like a, a, a widget service that you can enable within SolarWinds. Okay, so on the left we have the event-driven Ansible controller. And the first part of this is the configuration for the, um, the rulebook, but we'll take a look at that from the repo so it's easier to read. And then lastly, at the bottom here, we can see that it's waiting, it's listening for events on the webhook. On the right here, we have the automation controller where it will respond to the trigger from EDA by running the SolarWinds Fix Ports playbook when activated. Okay, so this is a GitLab repo that's a part of our project uh, for both our EDA controller and our Ansible controller. So this is where the playbooks and the rulebooks are stored. In this case, this is a rulebook, which is very similar to a playbook, and one of the mandatory configurations is the sources, and that is the source plugins. In this case, we're using a webhook, and we will receive a post REST API call with port 5000. So we're listening on port 5000 in the EDA controller. We'll receive the webhook from a Zapier service that's a part of the SolarWinds integration. So when we receive that webhook, it'll have data. So in that data, that's where we created a role. And our condition is that there must be a payload summary defined. Um, that summary was defined in SolarWinds. So it shows that it's router one and tunnel zero is one of the protected ports. And we created a very specific notification in a webhook, you know, mapped to that uh, particular summary. So if we receive that, that webhook and then our action is to run a job template in our Ansible automation controller. The job template runs a playbook and that playbook has access to the data that we received in the payload of the webhook. So we have the summary and we also have the message that's included in the webhook and the data would be things like the interface being down and what router it is and we'll be able to use that um, when we trigger the alert and the event and the action and ultimately the controller will run that playbook. Let's go ahead and log into our router and take a look at its current state for its configuration. First off, we'll take a look at OSPF and ensure that we do have a neighbor which is in a full state. And we are connected to the neighbor with tunnel zero. Secondly, we'll make sure that all of our interfaces are actually up and running. In particular, tunnel zero is up, obviously. So that's good. So this brings us to our scenario where we have Bob. Now, Bob is supposed to shut down interface tunnel zero on router 10 to get it ready for a cutover they have scheduled that evening. But it's almost lunchtime, and Bob's really hungry. And when Bob's hungry, he don't really think about what he's doing, you know? So enter Bob and his fat fingers. Oh, look, he's going in 10. That's cool. Oh, wait, no, wait a minute. That's router 1, Bob. Come on, Bob. He's going into the config. And now what is it? He's, he's going into interface tunnel zero. No, Bob, that's our OSPF neighbor to the core, Bob. Don't do it. No. No. Oh, come on. Oh, Bob, Bob, Bob. But he's off to lunch. BK, have it your way, you rule. So meanwhile, at lunchtime, no one actually knows yet what Bob has done. But because SolarWinds does its SNMP polling, after a while, about 10 minutes, it will detect this issue, and then we will at least be able to recover from it automatically, thanks to our friend, EDA. Okay, so now SolarWinds is aware that the port is down, which that will also trigger the alert which will send a notification via webhook to EDA. So let's take a look at EDA so we can see how it's configured on that side and we can see it respawn um, to this trigger from the webhook in real time. Okay, so we're receiving the webhook right now. Um, I just need to um, refresh these screens here a bit. You can see on the left we have the EDA controller and then on the right we have the automation controller. 
that it looks, you know, it's already running the playbook, but here's the data that we've already received on the EDA controller. You can see that this was read in from the um, webhook. So we'll go ahead and double click here onto a couple of the key salient points. The important output is the summary, which was sent in the webhook that explains that this was based off of router one in interface tunnel zero, which is one of our protected ports as part of our critical infrastructure, as well as the availability had um, dropped below 100%. So we can see that in this section. And when this playbook is run in the standard output of the playbook, we will also see that same data because we had passed that data to our playbook as well. We can set facts from the data that we learned from the webhook, in this case, um, interface tunnel zero from the summary. We have a task in our playbook to actually no shut a shut interface. In this case, Bob has shut that interface, tunnel zero. So we can see in our before state, after he made that change, then the it was false for enabled. That means it was shut. It was administratively down. And then after we ran our playbook, then ultimately our after state is true. So EDA from running the playbook had re-enabled our tunnel zero. And then what we did is we went ahead and effectively ran a show IP interface brief command so that we can ensure that the interface is up. And because it's up, let's go ahead and look at our playbook in the GitLab repository for our project for context. So we can see here that um, for router one, if we receive a webhook that we will go ahead and print out using the debug module, the summary and the message as part of that webhook uh, payload. So in the summary, we, we also can glean that it's TU0 interface and solar winds. We'll convert that to tunnel zero by using a set fact um, command. So that fact becomes a new variable that um, the router can understand. So as we iterate through um, that configuration to configure the interface um, for the config parameter for iOS interfaces, then it'll accept tunnel zero. And then what we're going to do is using the iOS command module, we will run the show IP interface brief so that we can see the state um, of those interfaces. So in the iOS interfaces module, we are also no shutting um, that interface. So that's why it says enable true. And then ultimately, let's go ahead and see how this worked out for Bob uh, to see if we could resolve that issue. In this case, the issue is resolved. And as we look in the router, we can verify that directly. And we can see that tunnel zero is up and line protocol is up. So everything looks good at the moment in terms of the interface. Now let's look at our OSPF neighbor, which is also up in a full state on tunnel zero. So we are in a good state of mind. Um, Bob has no idea that any of this has happened yet. So when he returns from lunch, um, he can um, then realize from solar winds and through notifications that, hey, he had a critical alert. Um, he can go in to solar winds and see what happened. So Bob, go ahead and, and take a look and see what you did here. So he goes and he looks in the alerts and he's, wait a minute, did I do that? So this was the interface, router one, tunnel zero, that he accidentally shut down. So he can acknowledge that it has been resolved and he can move about his business without needing to, again, consult ChatGPT to update his resume. No need to do that. Um, everything's okay. Thanks to EDA. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and we'll see you on the next one.